I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. I'm joined in studio by my colleague, Thaddeus McCotter of WJR, who's here in New York with me. And we're joined in studio from Washington, from the nation's capital, Francis Rose of In Depth with Francis Rose, each day on Federal News Radio. Gentlemen, good evening to you both. And I am just returned from the Gaza frontier, watching a battle unfolding. It's getting worse tonight. We'll have a report later on about the deaths in Eshkol, the uh, farming region where I was just a week ago, less than a week ago, days ago, uh, hit by mortar. There are casualties in all directions, including terrorist Hamas jumping out of tunnels and killing IDF. The ground action goes on. However, it's not the battlefield I want to talk about. It's the sense I got standing over the battlefield of chaos, of disorder, that we'd stepped over the line and that the U.S. government, Washington, our great leaders, no longer have the argument. They've lost it. Nobody else wants to pick it up. So I want to start with you, Francis, because you're not here to talk about foreign affairs. You're here to talk about domestic affairs. But there's, when I left, there was the Veterans Administration, there was the IRS, and the lingering story of the IRS and the persecution of conservative groups. And then the matter of the Rio Grande Valley, uh, the immigration, uh, the homeland security. Is there a sense in Washington that there, these aren't scandals, but they're, that they're just, we've lost the argument, we've lost management skills? Good evening to you, Francis. Good evening, John. Good evening, Thaddeus. Um, the sense that I am getting from the administration officials, former administration officials that I'm talking to in the last couple of weeks, John, is uh, one, I, the best word I can think of is confusion. Um, these folks are just as puzzled as I imagine world leaders are uh, from outside our borders looking in about what the next moves may be. Uh, Congress is moving without the administration on the Department of Veterans Affairs, a deal today uh, announced between the House and Senate that was about where you'd expect a deal to be, about halfway between what the uh, chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, the Republican Jeff Miller, and the uh, chairman of the Democratic uh, Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, Bernie Sanders, in reality an independent from Vermont, uh, wanted. The, the deal was kind of split the difference, in essence. Uh, each got some that they like, each got some that they hate. So Congress is moving on, at least in VA, uh, without the administration. Uh, we do expect to see the administration's choice to lead VA confirmed, if not tomorrow, later in the week before Congress leaves. But that's the problem. If uh, Congress is now the activity uh, source in Washington, they're leaving come Thursday, Friday, and uh, go, uh, Washington will go into its kind of its August malaise, and uh, so the activity that uh, we are seeing will be disappearing before too long. Uh, Francis, it's Thaddeus. Has there been any talk amongst the House members, Republican or Democrat, of staying and actually doing some more work because of the situation you just described? I mean, as John had pointed out earlier, there seems to be a prevailing sense of disorder bordering on chaos both internationally and domestically with the issues you're talking about. Has there been at least some attempt by some members to say we should stay here and do more? I haven't heard a word about it, Thaddeus. Um, of course, uh, each of your former colleagues uh, in the House is up for re-election in November. Uh, this is a prime time, as you, I'm sure you remember, for going back home and um, making their cases in the places where that's necessary. Uh, on the Senate side, there are some very tight races, some very contentious races, um, and in any number of publications now moving the likelihood of Republicans taking over the Senate to uh, at least 50 percent. The smallest number I've seen recently now is 50 percent. Uh, and it appears more and more likely that Republicans will take over in the fall on the Senate side, too. What that's doing, if anything, is prompting uh, less movement than we expected on the budget. Uh, Republicans now who think that they might have a chance to run the whole table um, come January are resistant to make a deal in September to uh, get a budget to keep the government operating on a brand new budget. So it's likely we'll see continuing resolutions as we have for the past God knows how long. But no, Thaddeus, I don't hear a single whisper 
about anybody p- um, proposing that Congress stay in. Well, Francis, I guarantee you those members are going to hear from their constituents. It's nice to see you again, but shouldn't you be <laughs> out there working and getting something done to earn your money? Yeah, don't we elect them because of what they do, not because they campaign? Uh, well, all right, fine, I'm old-fashioned. Let's press this, guys, because we look at this from the outside. We're, this is a recovering politician here with me in studio, and Francis and I cover politics all the time. The puzzlement, Francis, the administration, the executive, has a deal of power. Mr. Obama has exercised it most recently. But I am looking at what you're talking about, the domestic problems, struggles, and I'm looking at the foreign affairs struggles, and Mr. Obama does not seem to be involved or want to convey that he's involved or part of the solution. Now, I'm in New York, and so we often treat Washington as an alien to our understanding of prosperity. But you're in Washington. Is Washington puzzled that the president or his administration does not seem engaged? Well, I'll go back to that word I used at the beginning, John, and it's confusion. Um, maybe puzzlement is is uh, also accurate because that yes, that you're you're getting right at the gist of the conversation that I had uh, earlier this week with a, a person formerly in the administration, re- very recently in the administration, and this person said even from the position that that person was looking at the administration from. Uh, speaking on behalf of uh, the colleagues that this person worked with, we're just not sure what's going to happen next or what our positions are about some of these things. And, uh, you know, this is coming from somebody who was fairly high up in a very prominent agency and uh, a, a very avid, ardent supporter of President Obama and the administration as a whole. So it's not an issue that this person doesn't support the president any longer. They just are curious or confused about what the positions are on all of these issues that you mentioned before, um, especially at the border and especially in Israel, and are not sure what will happen next or when it might happen from the White House. Quick story. I spoke with Pat Buchanan about his new book, The Greatest Comeback, and we were reviewing the events of 66-67 that led up to Richard Nixon's successful campaign for the presidency. And I was struck in passing... Lyndon Baines Johnson was involved in absolutely everything that happened every day, including whether it was going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. He made a decision on that. He was, summer of 67, that's the rioting in Detroit. That's the rioting in Newark. Uh, Summer of 67 is what you'd have to say is a setup for the catastrophes that we're now viewing in Hamas. That's the six-day war, summer of 67. All of the international relations were a jumble in addition to Vietnam and 400,000 people involved. And Lyndon Johnson Johnson was still planning to run for presidency. He was involved. He gripped it. So Thaddeus, this presidency is either a uh, discontinuity, let's put it that way, let's talk about it being discontinuous with our understanding of the presidency, or something's gone very badly wrong. I can't read it. Whether this president has has stepped out and leave, uh, left his office, just abandoned it, which is impossible for me to believe. Or the American people no longer have an appetite for an executive branch that it's involved in threats to the American people. I can't decide. Well, I think, John and Francis, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Number one, 67 was not just a summer of love, as Mr. Panzers <laughs> pointed out. I was two at the time, but as I recall... Detroit was on yes. fire, yes. But when you look at this, you know, it's simple to say something glib, like he's dazed and confused, but the reality is a little deeper. As John has pointed out, Francis, there are all these problems going on. The complexity of the early 20th century, 21st century is starting to dawn on people. It's not just the, the Russians or it's not just Al-Qaeda. But I remember, and you remember, Francis, that one of the things people used to mock George W. Bush about was that he didn't have an intellectual curiosity necessary to engage in a multitude of issues. Are we seeing a a lack of intellectual curiosity, not just within the presidency, but within the entire political class to deal with, to engage these very difficult issues because they don't want to and or because they believe that they might not be able to do anything about it and would get blamed for even trying. That's an intuitive question, Francis. You're closer to the center of non-action than we are. What's your opinion? (laughs) Yeah, I think um, Thaddeus' latter observation there is more uh, dead on, and I think it fits with all of the dysfunctional things that I've spoken about with uh, you gentlemen before, and and that observation, Thaddeus, is right on. I think uh, it's a fear of engagement issue uh, because somehow somebody might blame me. 
And therefore, what we have is this drift. Now, what I saw, and I'll, I'll talk about this. We have other people coming here, and we can talk about this globally. What I saw standing over this battle was that no one was in charge, that there was no cavalry coming to the rescue, that the Israelis are tasked to solving a story that cannot be solved locally. It's a regional, global issue. I also saw, because I was watching the media at the same time, those rockets did not come entirely from Hamas. Those rockets are coming from other addresses. One of them is Tehran, locked in a conversation with my president about peace in our time. It's a feeling that I haven't got it wrong. No one wants to get it right. There, there, that's I've said it, Francis. It's not that the president did wrong with the IRS or with ICE or the VA. It's that he and his administration do not want to get it right. They think it's not their job or they're not going to take the risk because we've got an election in four months. Um, I'm not seeing anything to that degree in Washington. I Certainly the way you laid it out and the way that you laid it out while you were in Israel last week, which was just tr tremendous, compelling broadcasting, uh, by the way, um, you, I can see where one could make that case. That doesn't seem to be what people in Washington are, are seeing and thinking and telling me, John. It is, I, I'll go back again to the uh, confusion, or to use your word, puzzlement, about what will happen next. And I, maybe it's because of the complexities of the issues, but I'm not sure anybody's thinking of that deeply about why it's taking so long for policies to be made and executed. Let me try, Thaddeus. Uh, summer of 2006, we had a feeling that the center was not holding, that uh, what the disaster in Iraq couldn't be reversed. Did it feel like this, that no one was in charge or people wouldn't engage, they wouldn't lock into a solution? No, actually, it was quite the opposite. I think there was a view that the president was locked in. A lot of our cells were supporting him to stay the course in Iraq. This is prior to the announcement of the surge. And you had people who were for it, people who were against it, but there was a paradigm there that you could argue and fight within. This is different. This is chaos. This is a situation, and I'm, I hope Francis would agree with this at some level. You are seeing people who do not, not necessarily care to engage because of the cost to themselves, but a country that isn't holding them accountable for the non-engagement, which should shock their sensibilities. There's a vacuum here. The center has not held, and no one wants to jump in for fear it's an abyss. 30 seconds, Francis. Does this translate into a low voter turnout and indifference in November? Um, it was certainly what we're seeing in the primaries so far, and if even the most rabid partisans can't get interested enough to show up for the primaries, I'm not sure how it's going to translate to higher turnout in the general election in November. November. Francis Rose of In Depth with Francis Rose at the Federal News Radio in Washington. Your drive home, Thaddeus McCotter of WJR, here with me in my studio in New York. I'm John Batchelor.